In this video, we are going to understand how a Hamming decoder works and how to implement a Hamming 74 and a Hamming 84 decoder using Verilog. The circuit is synthesizable for FPGA in ASIC. The video contains the test bench that shows the functionality of the Hamming decoder and how it corrects 1 bit errors and detects 2 bit errors. If you are interested to see how a Hamming encoder works, please watch the tutorial How to implement a Hamming 74 encoder using Verilog. If you are interested to find out more theoretical aspects about Hamming codes, please use the resources from this video's description. A Hamming 74 decoder detects and corrects 1 bit errors using parity bits. The pair P4, P2, P1 is called a syndrome. When P4, P2, P1 equals 001, it means that bit 1 is corrupted. A Hamming 84 decoder uses an extra parity bit. Two bit errors are detected, but they are incorrectly fixed. Let's assume that Alice and Bob are communicating over a noisy channel. Alice uses a Hamming 74 encoder and sends the code word 1100110 to Bob. During the transmission over the noisy channel, bit 5 is altered so Bob receives the message 1110110. Bob uses his trusty Hamming decoder to check the validity of the received message. The syndrome of the received message is 5, so it gets automatically corrected. If two or more bits were altered, then the decoder will signal this so Bob could ask for a retransmission from Alice. This simple and effective system is very popular with safety critical applications like aerospace, automotive, critical servers or financial data. If we look at the Venn diagram for the encoder, we can see that P1 is calculated by XORing the data bits 7, 5 and 3. This can also be observed in the small circuit schematic of the encoder. If we look now at the decoder schematic, we can see that P1 is obtained by XORing bits 7, 5 and 3 with bit 1. This translates to Recalculate the parity bits of 7, 5 and 3 and compare it with the received parity P1. If any of these bits are altered, then P1 will get a value of 1. The same logic is applied to P2 and P4. By grouping the bits P4, P2, P1, we can get values between 0 and 7. This is also called a syndrome and it points to the bit that was altered during transmission. Zero means that all the bits from the received code word are correct. A non-zero value is passed to a 3 to 8 decoder and XORed with the received code word. This will correct a single bit error. A Hamming 84 decoder uses an extra parity bit so it is able to distinct between 1 bit and 2 bit errors. In the case of a 2-bit error, the decoder will incorrectly fix the received message but will be aware that something is very wrong in our system. And now it's action time! Let's implement a Hamming 74 decoder using Verilog. First we are going to analyze the module's ports. Our module has 7 input bits for Hamming 74 code words and an extra parity bit for Hamming 84 code words. Next, we have 4 bits of output data and 2 individual bits for 1 bit and 2 bit errors. In the case of a 1 bit error, only O1 bit error will set, while for 2 bit errors, both 1 bit error and 2 bit error will set. At line 10, we declare our internal variables used to build this combinational circuit. The parity bits and the syndrome are declared using the reg type because they will be used in the left hand side of always at procedures. Data decoded and parity bits have the wire type because they are used in continuous assignments. 
If you want to easily master Verilog coding styles, I recommend you the Udemy course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Functional Verification. At line 17 we use an always at star procedure to create the parity bits. I grouped all three bits in the same procedure to make the code more compact. At line 24 we create a 3 to 8 decoder also using an always at star procedure. We concatenate the parity bits and feed them to a case statement that outputs a one hot syndrome value. The default line covers the zero case when we have no errors. Writing a decoder in this manner will give you the best synthesis results for FPGA or ASIC. At line 37 we create the data decoded value that is the XOR between the syndrome and the input data. At line 40 we recalculate the parity of the 7-bit input message. This is used by the Hammond 84 decoder. If we have a 1-bit error then the calculated parity will differ from the input parity. If we have a 2-bit error then the input parity will be the same as the calculated parity but the syndrome will be non-zero. This is how we separate between a 1-bit error from a 2-bit error. At line 42 we calculate the output parity errors. There are multiple ways for implementing this but I decided to use the one that you see. 1-bit error is a set that whenever the syndrome has a non-zero value. I use the Verilog OR reduction operator to create a 3-bit OR gate from the parity bits. The logic for the 2-bit error at line 43 reuses the 3-bit OR gate and also compares the value of the input parity and the calculated parity. At line 48 we extract the 4-bit output data by using a continuous assignment. This doesn't consume any logic gates. Voila, we implemented the Hamming 74 and Hamming 84 decoder using Verilog. As you can see the decoder is made mainly from XOR gates which are used to calculate the parity bits, the syndrome and the output data. Let's create a simple test bench for our Hamming decoder. First we set the timescale of 1 nanosecond by 1 picosecond. At line 6 we declare the test bench variables that will be connected to our DUT. We use reg for the inputs and wire for the outputs. At line 13 we instantiate the DUT and connect its ports with the test bench variables. At line 21 we have our test scenario in an initial procedure. At line 23 we use the dollar monitor to print the changes on the variable connected to the DUT. At line 27 we use on iData all the 16 Hamming 74 codes. I added an underscore to separate the parity bits for the input data bits. The parity is calculated after every update of iData by using the XOR reduction operator. At line 44 we create a 1-bit error on the Hamming code for decimal 0. We intentionally flip bit 0 while correctly setting the parity with a 0 value. The decoder should be able to automatically correct this error by calculating the corresponding syndrome. At line 46 we emulate another 1-bit error on the codeboard for decimal 0 by toggling bit 4. At line 48 we emulate a 2-bit error for the same codeword. This error should be detected but the output should be incorrectly fixed. At line 51 we send the correct codeword for 0 again. The test stops at line 54. Here we have the simulation results from ModelSim. As you can see on OData all 16 Hamming 74 codes are correctly decoded. Next we see how the syndrome values are updated each time a 1-bit error is detected. The yellow cursor is placed over a syndrome value of 1000 meaning that bit 4 is incorrect. For the first two 1-bit errors we have OData equals 0 and all 1-bit error asserted. The 2-bit error sets O2-bit error and as I said O data will be incorrectly decoded so it gets a value of 9 instead of 0. O1-bit error remains asserted as the syndrome has a non-zero value. In the end the data gets decoded correctly as a valid codeword is inserted in the Hamming decoder. 
feel free to use other code words from the test bench and insert 1 bit and 2 bit errors. If you like this tutorial and you are interested in a practical and easy path to learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my Udemy course called Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.